everyone, my name is Miss Marilyn and welcome to Preschool Storytime. We're going to get started the way we always do by shaking our sillies out. Ready? We're going to shake, shake, shake our sillies out, shake, shake, shake our sillies out, shake, shake, shake our sillies out and wiggle our waggles away. We're going to clap, clap, clap our crazies out, clap, clap, clap our crazies out, clap, clap, clap our crazies out and wiggle our waggles away. We're going to stretch, stretch, stretch our stretchies out, stretch, stretch, stretch our stretchies out, stretch, stretch, stretch our stretchies out and wiggle our waggles away. We're going to yawn, yawn, yawn our yawnies out, yawn, yawn, yawn our yawnies out, yawn, yawn, yawn our yawnies out and wiggle our waggles away. Good job, guys. Thanks for singing along with me. Well, today we're going to read some stories about food. And we're going to start with one of my favorite books, Dragons Love Tacos. Do you guys like tacos? I know I do. Hey kids, did you know that dragons love tacos? They love beef tacos and chicken tacos. They really love big gigantic tacos. And they like tiny little baby tacos as well. Why do dragons love tacos? Maybe it's the smell from the sizzling pan. Maybe it's the crunch of the crispy tortillas. Maybe it's a secret. Either way, if you want to make friends with dragons, tacos are key. Hey dragon, why do you guys love tacos so much? Mm -hmm. But wait, as much as dragons love tacos, they hate spicy salsa even more. They hate green spicy salsa and red spicy salsa. They hate spicy chunky salsa and spicy smooth salsa. If the salsa is spicy at all, dragons cannot stand it. Well, why do dragons hate spicy salsa? Well, just one drop of hot sauce can make a dragon's ears smoke. One single speck of hot pepper makes a dragon snort sparks. Oh, and when they eat something spicy, they get the tummy troubles. Oh boy. So if you want to make tacos for dragons, make sure to keep the toppings mild. That means tomatoes, good. Lettuce, good. Cheese, good. All of these are good toppings for tacos for dragons. Hey dragon, how do you feel about spicy taco toppings? Oh. Dragons love parties. They love costume parties, they love pool parties, they like really big gigantic parties with accordions, and tiny little parties with charades. Why do dragons love parties? Maybe it's the conversation. Maybe it's the dancing. Maybe it's the comforting sounds of a good friend's laughter. The only thing dragons love more than parties or tacos is taco parties. Taco parties are parties with lots of tacos. If you want to have some dragons over for a taco party, you'll need buckets of tacos, pants loads of tacos. The best way to judge is to get a boat and fill the boat with tacos. That's about how many tacos dragons need for a taco party. After all, dragons love tacos. Hey dragon, are you excited for the big taco party? Yeah. Just remember, dragons hate spicy salsa. Before you host your taco party with dragons, get rid of all of the spicy salsa. In fact, bury the spicy salsa in the backyard where no one can find it. The dragons love your taco party. They love the music, they love the decorations, they especially love the tacos. Congratulations! It's a good thing you got rid of all of that spicy <gasps> Wait a second. What are those little green things in the salsa? <gasps> Didn't you read the fine print? That's some totally mild salsa, now with spicy jalapenos. Dragons, listen to me. Don't, I, don't, don't eat those tacos. You see those little green specks in the salsa? Those are jalapeno peppers and they are super spicy. I know you love tacos, dragons, but you are not gonna love these tacos. Don't let the dragons eat those tacos. Oh no! Ah, 
It's too late. <gasps> they burned the whole house down. <gasps> Why would dragons help you rebuild your house? Maybe they're good Samaritans. Maybe they feel bad for wrecking it. Or maybe they're just in it for the taco breaks. After all, dragons love tacos. The end. Ah, that story always makes me laugh. All right, now it's time for a song. And this song is called Go Bananas. So, first you form the corn. You form, form the corn, and then you form the corn. Form, form the corn, and then you husk the corn. Husk, husk the corn, and then you husk the corn. Husk, husk the corn, and then you pop the corn. Pop, pop the corn, and then you pop the corn. Pop the corn. First you form the onion. Form, form the onion. Then you form the onion. Form, form the onion. Then you cut the onion. Cut, cut the onion. Then you cut the onion. Cut, cut the onion. And then you cut you from the onion. <laughs> you cry from the onion. <sighs> First you form the banana. Form, form banana. Then you form banana. Form, form banana. Then you peel banana. Peel, peel, banana, then you peel, banana, peel, peel, banana, then you smash, banana, smash, smash, banana, then you smash, banana, smash, smash, banana, then you go, bananas, go, go, bananas, then you go, bananas, go, go, bananas. Good job, guys. That song will get you moving and a grooving. Now it's time for our next story, which is called The Good Egg. I was just rescuing this cat. You know why? Because I'm a good egg. A very good egg. It's true. I do all sorts of good things like I'll carry your groceries, I'll water your plants, and I'll change your tires. And if you need any help whatsoever, I'm your egg. I'll even paint your house. I've always been a good egg. It's been this way from the start even in my earliest days back at the store. There were dozens of us living under one recycled roof. There was Meg, and there was Peg, and there was Greg, and there was Clegg, and then there was Shell, and Shelly, and Sheldon, and Shelby, and Egbert, and Frank, and other Frank. The other 11 eggs weren't on their best behavior. They weren't exactly good. They ignored their bedtime, and they only ate sugary cereal. They threw tantrums, and they cried for no reason, and they broke their stuff on purpose. Meanwhile, I tried to be in charge. I tried to fix their bad behavior. I tried to keep the peace, because I was a good egg, a very good egg. <sighs> Nobody seemed to care, though. Every night I was exhausted. My head felt scrambled. And then one fateful morning, I noticed some cracks in my shell, and they were everywhere. My doctor said it was from all the pressure I was putting on myself, the pressure of making sure everyone was as good as me. I was cracking up, literally. Something had to change. I had had enough. Well, I told Meg and Peg and Greg and Clegg and Shell and Shelly and Sheldon and Shelly and Egbert and Frank and other Frank that I was leaving. I can't be the only good egg in a bad carton, I said. Blah, 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 they repeated. And I left that night. I wandered from town to town, and hours became days, and days became weeks, and I lost track of time. And I was alone. Out there on the road under the stars, I really tried to focus on myself and what I needed. I took walks, I read books, I floated on the river, I wrote in my journal. I found simple moments to be quiet. I breathed in and I breathed out. I even started painting. And for once, I found time for me. And guess what? Little by little, the cracks in my shell started to heal, and my head no longer felt scrambled. I started to feel like myself again. So I made a big decision. 
I'm returning to my old carton and my friends. Besides, it's kind of lonely out here. This time, I know what I needed to do. I try not to worry so much. I'll be good to my fellow eggs while I be good to myself. Here we go. Everyone missed me, and I missed them too. Howdy, Meg. Hello, Peg. Hey, George. Greetings, Clegg. What's up, Shell? Aloha, Shelly. Hey, oh, Sheldon. Hi, Shelby. Good day, Egbert. What's happening, Frank? How do you do, other Frank? Sure, every once in a while, somebody's still a little bit bad, but it's not like before. Here's what I realized. The other eggs aren't perfect, and I don't have to be either, and I'm okay with that. Yep, the old carton is back together. We're a solid dozen again. It's good to be home. The end. Well, I've got a story for you, and this one we're going to do on the flannel board, and it's called It Look Like Spilt Milk. Well, it looked like spilled milk, but it wasn't. It looked like a bunny, but it wasn't. It looked like a bird, but it wasn't. It looked like a tree, but it wasn't. It looked like an ice cream cone. Ooh, that looks tasty, but it wasn't. It looked like a flower, but it wasn't. It looked like a pig, but it wasn't. It looked like, ooh, a piece of birthday cake, but it wasn't. It looked like a sheep, ah, but it wasn't. It looked like a mitten, but it wasn't. It looked like a squirrel, but it wasn't. It was cloud. Maybe you guys can go take a walk outside and see if you can see anything in the clouds. All right, we are on to our next book. And this book is called The Pigeon Finds a Hot Dog. Ooh, a hot dog. Yummy, 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 yummy. Ah. Uh, May I help you? Duckling's here. Is that a hot dog? It's not a hot dog. It's my hot dog. Uh, I have a question. I've never had a hot dog before. Mm, what do they taste like? Well, they are a taste sensation. Each morsel is a joy, a celebration in a bun. If you've never experienced the splendor of eating a hot dog, you should really, wait a second. This hot dog is mine. I found it. Oh, of course, enjoy your hot dog. Go ahead. Uh, would you say that it tastes like chicken? Can you believe this guy? What? It just, it just tastes like a hot dog. Oh, okay, okay. So, it doesn't taste like chicken then. 
Oh, for Pete's sake. Hey, I'm just a curious bird. Oh, that's it. It's my hot dog, right? Mine, mine, mine. Oh, I'm a curious bird. What does it taste like? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, right. This is unbelievable. Finders keepers, that's what I always say. Ugh, I can't take it anymore. What am I supposed to do? I think I've got an idea. Ah, they shared the hot dog. You know what? You're pretty smart for a duckling. The end. Now we're going to sing a song called All the Raindrops. If all of the raindrops were lemon drops and gum drops, oh what a rain that would be. I'd stand outside with my mouth open wide singing ah 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 ah. If all the raindrops were lemon drops and gum drops, oh what a rain that would be. If all of the raindrops were candy bars and ice cream, oh, what a rain that would be. I'd stand outside with my mouth open wide, sing ah, 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 ah. If all the raindrops were candy bars and ice cream, oh, what a rain that would be. Thanks for singing with me, guys. Now we're going to read our last story. And this story is called Little P. And little P would not like lemon drops and gum drops. This is the story of little P, Mama P, and Papa P. Little P was a happy little guy. He liked to do lots of things. He liked rolling down hills, for example, super fast. He liked hanging out with his pee pals. And he liked it when Papa P came home at the end of the day. Papa P would fling Little P off of a spoon high into the air and, Papa, and Little P would scream again, again. And at bedtime, Little P very much liked snuggling with Mama P, hearing stories about what Mama P was like when she was a Little P. But there was one thing Little P did not like. Candy. Oh, that's what you have to eat after dinner every night when you're a pea. Candy, candy, candy. Monday it's red candy, Tuesday it's orange candy, Wednesday it's yellow candy, Thursday pink and purple polka dot candy, Friday is striped candy, Saturday is swirly candy, and Sunday is rainbow candy. And little P hated all of it. If you want to grow up big and strong, you have to eat your candy, Papa P would say. If you don't finish your candy, then you can't have dessert, Mama P would say. Ugh, how many pieces do I have to eat? Five pieces and you can have dessert. Five pieces, he whined. Five pieces, they chimed. One, Yuck. two, Ugh. three, Ugh. four, Blech. five, Whew, five pieces of candy. Can I have dessert? Yes, now you can have dessert, said Mama P and Papa P. And little P couldn't wait to see what it was. <gasps> Spinach, squealed little P, my favorite. Little P licked his dessert plate clean. Yum, ah, uh, delicious, said little P. And they lived happily ever after. The end. Well, that was our last story for the day, so we're going to sing our closing song, If You're Happy and You Know It. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, pat your knees. If you're happy and you know it, pat your knees. If you're happy and you know it, your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, pat your knees. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. 
If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray! If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray! If you're happy and you know it, your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray! Thanks for singing with me, guys. Bye!